Um, okay, so um, so we're going to jump to the next uh, two speakers. Um, so um, Inez Ariza is an architect and researcher from Buenos Aires. Um, through her current research work, Inez is developing an adaptive detailing workflow using WAM, so wire arc additive manufacturing, as a joining technique for robotic assembly of spatial metal structures. Uh, her um, Diploma was received with honours from the University of Buenos Aires in 2011 and her Masters of Science in Design and Competition from MIT in 2016. Since October 2017, Ines is a PhD researcher at the Chair of Architecture and Digital Fabrication, which is directed by Fabio Gramazio and Matthias Kohler um, at the ETH in Zurich. Um, Ines, welcome. Um, over to yeah. you. So uh, yeah, um, I'm Ines Arisa. I'm a PhD researcher at Gramazio Color Research, uh, the Chair of Architecture and Digital Fabrication at ETH Zurich. And I'm going to present today um, the work on my PhD that is called uh, Adaptive Detailing with Wire and Arc Additive Manufacturing, one. Uh, and some comments, uh, I'm super excited about what I just seen. Uh, thank you so much for the um, invitation. Uh, very good uh, start and also the questions. So very looking forward to your questions at the end. Uh, so yeah, so the PhD <clears throat> um, presents uh, a method uh, for designing and fabricating uh, connection details um, for um, non-standard non -standard structures using one. So today I'm going to show a little bit uh, why we are doing this and also how we are doing this. So uh, a little bit of background. So um, these are uh, digital fabricated projects, very um, uh, state of the art of what's happening. We see um, uh, basically a blow up on the scale of the things uh, are being um, built with digital fabrication. Um, the scale, but also the performance and the basically really pushing the limits of the materials and what basically can be built. If we see, <clears throat> if we see um, under like what, how is, going, is, is this being built? So the technologies um, uh, used for this, um, we see uh, a lot of uh, improvements and particularly creativity in the use of every single thing. So for example, um, yeah, just depositing materials in completely um, uh, innovative geometries and varying geometries or combining processes, uh, multi-robotic processes or cooperative processes, also inventing new tools and using completely new materials that were not available at all in architecture before. And uh, yeah, the possibility of, for example, mass customizing the position of the material. And also a very interesting line of research that is uh, basically using non-standard materials um, that with feedback processes, we can basically bring uh, scan them and bring them into the digital process. So yeah, so basically the background right now looks uh, very uh, staggering, amazing, impressive, the work that is being conducted, particularly at um, research uh, institutions. And this con contrast, contrasts uh, a little bit with two other uh, scenarios, which is one is the aut automotive, uh, automation um, in the automotive industry. Um, so for example, this is robotic welding, uh, one of the first uh, automated processes, which is uh, extremely um, uh, in high development right, right now, and it's uh, fully controlled and very in contrast with what we see in the construction side, which is basically a complete manual process that has to be repeated each time and it's different each time. So um, I think there is the gap. So between what I just showed uh, before, which is this creativity in architecture and design and the uh, quality of uh, uh, automation, but also uh, what is actually happening in construction uh, on site. So um, to a certain extent, it is understandable that we cannot basically um, have the same situation. So architecture is actually unique and cannot be repeated each time. So uh, we are actually concerned with uh, inventing something new each time, even if we um, uh, uh, want to optimize some processes, we're still pushing and uh, each time we build something, this is something unique because it has to accommodate to its uh, particular requirements. So this is a structure built at uh, ETH Zurich, also a grammatical research. 
where um, two robots are used to assemble um, standard elements in a non-standard configuration, um, given a particular volume, like a defined volume and an assembly sequence. Um, in this case, the, um, the two robots are used to uh, place the material, the, the bars in place, and then the joining is done by hand. Um, still a combination in a way of a very um, sophisticated setup with two robots hanging from the floor, from the, from the ceiling, and uh, a manual process in between. So here the manual process was very important because uh, still, even if we can imagine that this is super high precision, in a way, actually there are a lot of um, uncertainties in the process. So the location of these um, end effectors, but also the deformation of the material itself. So the manual welding at the end was very um, useful. So one of the next steps and where the project starts is basically how to incorporate or where to see the opportunities of um, using robotic fabrication for solving this problem um, programmatically. So there are uh, strategies and of course a lot of challenges and uh, I hope many opportunities to discuss uh, of doing this with WAM. So what is WAM? So WAM uh, is an additive manufacturing technique that is basically a um, welding technique. Uh, it's a welding process with a welding uh, torch attached to a robot and uh, to deposit material in space. And the particular quality here is that we don't need additional support. So uh, WAM actually, um, it's all over the place at the moment. Um, so uh, since 2012 have been growing exponentially, the research on this technology, this is how the map was looking in 2018. And since then, actually the amount of things uh, that have shown up is amazing. So there is uh, basically a very uh, fast growing um, field of research in additive manufacturing. Um, so the technique was uh, particularly interesting at the beginning for um, the aerospace uh, industry, particularly because um, there is a high deposition rate. So we can deposit material fairly quickly compared to other uh, additive manufacturing um, processes in metal. So uh, the possibility of building large size basically was very interesting. And this project, the MX3D Bridge, was um, the first to really show or showcase to the world um, that we can actually build uh, structural uh, components with this technique. MX3D also uh, explored other deposition strategies very uh, early on. So this is, for example, um, discrete deposition where also building the whole uh, structure, but now with a discrete point-by-point uh, point, uh, welding. So what we're doing is a slightly different, uh, taking the discrete deposition strategy, but only printing the material that is in between parts that are already existing. So uh, of course, here is a matter of um, time, saving time to not print the whole thing, but only print where we need customization. To illustrate this point a bit better, I'm gonna compare to other, um, connections for discrete structures. So take, for example, the standard connection that uh, uh, you can relate to regular uh, structure domes, space frames, where every single connection or almost all of them are the same. So this is relates to a standard uh, production process where it's basically mass uh, um, uh, industrialized. Every single piece is the same. Even fabricated with digital fabrication, this basically there's no uh, variation in the pieces. So of course, very interesting, uh, particularly cheap or reliable that every single joint will look the same and it will work. But um, at the same time, it presupposes a lot of uniformity and uh, basically, uh, yeah, restriction in the standardization of the overall shape. So um, lately we've seen other approach, which is, uh, this is uh, uh, here very meaningful, the custom, connection detail uh, uh, available thanks to additive manufacturing. Uh, so basically this is the mass customization of these nodes uh, where uh, basically we can locally design each of these nodes according to a particular problem. So 
uh, we can uh, design these nodes based on geometric aspects or uh, structural loads that within an assembly, of course, uh, uh, is changing. So uh, we can see basically, um, yeah, so uh, quite uh, uh, diverse things also in metal in these three cases. Um, this approach is quite interesting and also uh, motivated a lot of um, research and a lot of projects on that direction. Um, but uh, it has this, of course, this challenge of the post-processing of the part. So how to actually um, uh, post-process the part after. So because the part is done in a separate process, then we have to actually prepare it to actually build with it. And of course, if we actually take this very extreme and we uh, take parts, each of these uh, joints are different, then we'll have a challenge basically on the construction side on how to assemble all this uh, very um, heterogeneous puzzle. Of course, there is also the question of uh, what type of uh, environment we're uh, building on. So for example, if uh, the assembly is done on site and we don't have a high precision environment, it might be that these uh, joints might not even fit. So basically it's a very predefined uh, strategy. Uh, in that respect, there is a lot of um, studies at the, at the moment in one. So um, exploring uh, this approach, uh, building basically uh, prefabricated components or prefabricating connectors that can then be assembled um, to be part of a larger assembly. Um, we have examples, very uh, high uh, quality examples um, uh, with continuous printing, most of them, and uh, the latest is also uh, an interesting uh, uh, reference that is print on top of an existing member as the one in the um, right down uh, low. So um, in this respect, uh, I continue more in this direction and propose uh, an adaptive connection detail that is basically um, not fully vague before uh, the construction starts, but basically the geometry is adaptive uh, to uh, the actual location of the members. So in this respect, we, um, we skip um, some post-processing and we also make sure that the geometry fits to the actual um, location of the parts. So we see now, we'll see now a video. Um, it's running, just a comment uh, if it's your sensitive to light because there is welding on it. So yeah, so we start basically um, mapping the reachable space at the robot and finding a place where to put a joint. Uh, then localizing the members um, to identify the actual location of the bars. This can be done because we are using a standard elements. In the case of other um, non-standard elements could be done with other sensing strategies as the project we just seen before. So basically we locate the bars and uh, update um, the location uh, on the digital model of these parts. Then we're ready for um, welding. So the first step is basically actually a um, more defined um, scanning process that is basically finding the starting points of uh, the part that we're gonna build. So we can update basically the entry and the exit points of the joint that we sign before starting. And then we can print really on, front, uh, on top of this, um, of this information. So then the process, the printing process is uh, basically um, point by point, so discrete. And uh, here an important aspect is that we can use the time that we need for cooling time to actually um, move around between different points um, to optimize the process a little bit. Uh, so the uncertainty on the material um, needs uh, a second uh, measurement. So we cannot know exactly where the final layer uh, height is. 
So we can scan again, basically the structure and then print on top of that uh, final layer. This is done with touch sensing that is basically uh, using the wire as a conductive to know, as a probe uh, to know exactly where is located, where is the structure is located. An aspect that is uh, dedicated to in place one is that we're always uh, printing in between other elements. So the big challenge is how to print uh, to avoid collisions. We will see a bit more of that in a second. Um, now we have at the very end, we scan again the final points. And then we finalize the join. Um, to assemble. So uh, we don't have more of the collision, but basically this is one of the most challenges. I have some slides at the end that uh, to discuss that better. So yeah, so then uh, basically uh, that's the joint. Um, good, so we go back to uh, here. So here is uh, a pipeline of the things that are involved with a process like that. Um, so uh, there are many aspects um, and the important thing is that not all these things are necessary to actually build a connection like this. What I just show is a very simple connection that is basically two arms to support a piece. Uh, in this case, uh, we only use basically localization and uh, the reachability uh, map to know where the robot can print to avoid collisions, uh, pathfinding and path slicing, and then printing and touch sensing. But we can imagine that uh, basically this can get more and more complex when we know more about the material behavior and uh, the requirements, the functional requirements, uh, like the structural requirements of the joint. So the idea of this pipeline is that it's flexible, flexible to add uh, basically um, independent processes that can feed in more information as we know. In a way, more or less how we think about details that we don't know everything when we start designing, but actually we are uh, learning, uh, learning about the process as we uh, design a connection. Um, so yeah, so assume on part of the process on the, on the design, we have uh, basically the accessibility, reachability, which is the fabrication constraints to basically understand geometrically what um, is accessible first for the torch, but then for the robot. So we do a reachability map um, to know exactly in which locations the robot can actually uh, move and have many uh, ch chances of actually reaching uh, a, a possible configuration. And then we use this box or this uh, kind of box as a design space for um, uh, material distribution. So to know where the low paths are to actually distribute material in the best possible locations. Um, with this, it's important to know that after that, uh, we still need to keep in mind the, the fabrication constraints or the material constraints uh, in particular. Uh, so this is a result of a top, top of, for example, where we can find paths that are printable, but still we need to, uh, again, uh, adjust this path to uh, be able to print without collisions. So the concept uh, basically goes back to this idea that instead of having a fully bay connection detail uh, from the beginning, um, as in the planning phase, uh, the connection detail is actually very open and updated uh, during the build-up process, particularly based on two aspects. There is one, the actual location of the parts, but second, the uh, material um, results that at this point we cannot fully simulate. So it's very useful to be able to still scan and adapt to what we actually get. So um, maybe to go to also the questions that Roland is uh, asking, uh, what can we build with this? 
and how does it change, how we design, uh, there is uh, a lot to explore. And of course, the, the main uh, thing now is actually getting the technique to actually run and work. But uh, some things uh, we tried is uh, basically using this as um, small structures uh, of linear elements or curved elements or more complex even network elements. In all of these, there is one aspect that remains that is this uh, basically spatial configuration that we're always outside. So basically the node is being uh, uh, specialized, I don't know, like outside of the normal point where the joint is. So that makes it uh, more visible and expressive. Um, so some open challenges on this, um, I, there are many, but uh, some of the ones that are imminent uh, is to ensure basically the repeatability of the process. So in particular, control the process parameters. Uh, one thing is controlling the process parameter for a standard or let's say a known condition. And another is um, understanding basically what can be built in terms of geometries in which uh, directions of printing angles and uh, curvatures we can print. So this is a big challenge because of course uh, it's a lot of testing to understand and control the process. Um, related to that, in particularly to this technique, um, the aspect of the torch orientation. So basically to avoid collisions, the torch cannot be aligned with the path uh, most of the times. So um, this is one, actually one of the reasons why to actually specialize the node and put it outside the material outside as much as possible. So to actually be able to access it but also um, can be that the, the basically the torch orients um, in different configurations to avoid the collisions and it still actually works. So this uh, it's a path printed with 45 degrees and it's still um, it's um, a good result, let's say. Uh, another uh, challenge is um, related to the heat. And this is a big topic. And a lot of research is happening to understand this better. Um, uh, of course, the, the heat is changing, uh, so we add uh, material and basically the structure is cooling down, uh, but still we need to wait at each iteration uh, to cool down the, 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 the joint, so we, we have to wait until it's cooled down before we print again. So, um, so a, a big topic is how to control this, and uh, especially related to the amount of mass and the, sh the, the, the shape of this mass that is already deposited. Um, a, a separate or very connected at the same time um, uh, challenge is the modeling of the material. And this uh, is, is quite uh, challenging in terms of these variating conditions. Uh, and that is why in particular at this stage, uh, we go for an adaptive process where you don't know to know everything in advance, but you are measuring during the process to understand where you are to keep printing. Uh, but of course, to actually model the material, the behavior, and um, uh, assure a good quality of the result, it will be needed to actually be able to model uh, the differences in the position according to the torch orientations and how uh, the material is uh, according, for example, to gravity. Um, so the main contributions uh, of this work uh, is uh, basically to characterize the whole in-place adaptive detailing with one, so the technique itself, and then propose uh, a pipeline for integrating uh, these fabrication constraints at the very uh, start of the production process. And to end, I would like to bring um, a reflection, um, maybe again, uh, connecting with uh, the question from Roland, um, if we think what uh, we will do with this, and uh, this are, is just an image of a dome, that if we think abstractly, we have uh, this regular pattern that it looks uh, perfectly homogeneous and regular, but actually if we load it, we see that every single um, bar is different and every connection or, or there are differences in the connection that actually um, have to be taken into account. So thinking in this respect, uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to see basically using this method for um, solving these differences and acknowledging that in a structure. So where you can see actually the, the differentiation on the performance that is actually there, but 
by the way we build a standardizing uh, uh, components or over customizing components, um, we it's hard to see. So one of uh, one one interest is basically make this visible. So yeah, um, I think the, the that's it. I'm very happy to take questions uh, at the end of the session. Thank you for this uh, for this uh, lecture. When I when I look at this and take um, uh, link it to uh, Roland's uh, question, maybe this technology, maybe this uh, entire additive manufacturing, but especially your field, is um, the most applicable to all this biomimicry ideas uh, and uh, really following forces uh, as they appear in designs as uh, as an activity. Philip is the one handling the question and uh, to give him an opportunity to uh, to. Um, is there any question, Philip, which we have to raise here now from the audience? Yes, there is a question. Perfect. Off you go. First of all, very interesting way of applying the WAM process in steel structures. I was wondering if you have previously investigated the mechanical properties of the point by point printed material, as it is widely known from literature that it largely differs from the traditionally manufactured one. In other words, how do you know that the printed adaptive node would sustain the design load? Um, sorry, I need to switch my setup for a second. <laughs> uh, so you see me again. Yeah, now we see you again. Do you see me again? Cool. <laughs> um, that it's going back and forth, I think. As a, um, so um, yeah, so that's a super uh, um, important uh, point. So I, I'm not uh, working here as a structure engineer of these uh, joints. Sorry, I will just switch to this. That looks uh, more fun. Um, so, uh, but I, we have done some tests to understand basically the, um, the performance of this uh, material. So the first thing um, that we try, I'm going to show a bit of that. Uh, work in progress. Um, one second. Um, yeah, so um, basically we are testing this material under tension loading to see how it performs and uh, simulate the breaking point. Um, so first of all, to, to the big question is, uh, okay, can we actually build with this material? Is this material strong enough to actually, uh, it's, a, it's a structure material. The result here is that it's uh, quite uh, similar to, um, to uh, the original material. So S355, uh, so it's actually, the result is uh, quite good, but, uh, um in a way uh, that doesn't answer your question your question is the comparison between the continuous printing and the um, and the discrete so here uh, the basically we use the discrete uh, because we could not uh, use continuous print uh, on air so the idea is that we can actually use this technique to bridge uh, parts that are not touching at all um which is basically allowing us uh, to uh, work with uncertainty and basically not super high precision um, um, setups. Uh, is that your question, like the comparison within the continuous and discrete, or more um, like an actual AM metal technology prefabricated part? I, th I think it's it's uh, it uh, say it points uh, to to the question, but you also can then add on your discrete made line and continuous line to say then improve the next uh, the next uh, performance uh, parameters. And I'm super happy to see, say, um, um, the variety of these technologies, which we're going to see also later in the day, that uh, there's so much um, research to be continued. So uh, it's uh, it feels like uh, each, each field you dig in, obviously you do not exactly know everything, but just then again, the open field for, for the next, um, for the next uh, investigation. I need to stop here now. Thanks, Ines, for this uh, for this presentation, and thanks for showing your mock-up last time on the uh, on the beam in uh, 2000. And, uh, the, um, what was it? 18? No, 19. Um, and hope to see more uh, next time again in uh, in physical.